David. I'm so happy to talk to you. I'm great. How are you holding up? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm really happy. It's nice to be in oh, Canada. Good. Yes. Well, we'd love to have you shoot the show in Vancouver. Um, yeah. Trust me, I'd rather be in Vancouver than Toronto, but it's all good. Um, first of all, I love this show. Okay. So I'm addicted. I've been watching since day one. And my goodness, Eddie has been through the ringer. You know, I don't know if we should be upset with Eddie, if we should feel sorry for him, but you do such a good job at making a, a character who has had some difficulties. We, we feel for you, David. Really, what's your secret there? Oh my God. Um, uh, I'll take all of those compliments. Uh, uh, you know, it's all, the writers do all the job. You know, the writers do the, the brunt of the work. I just show up and stumble through it all like a like a bear on roller skates. Sometimes, sometimes not. Um, I, listen, I think people respond to people who are trying. People respond to vulnerability. Um, no matter what you've done in your past, if you're vulnerable about it and you are remorseful, and you're trying and people can see you struggle, they can relate with you. And I think that's what people are experiencing with Eddie. You know, on paper, yeah, maybe you would think Catherine should have left him. Maybe even I think Catherine should have left him, but, uh, but he's trying, he's constantly trying and he's a good dad and he's trying to be the best he can be. And, uh, and I think that's why people stick with him, yeah. I agree. I mean, Catherine is is completely a saint. I don't know if I'd be as uh, forgiving as her, but you know, we should and, make and one of those candles, saw... those like prayer candles yeah. with her little face on it. You know? Oh my God! Absolutely. Yeah. You know how much money Grace Park would make off that for sure. No, no question about it. Correct. But well, I, I, I said it, so now it's my invention. So I get all of it. But Grace <laughs> is, you know, she's she's doing well. It's the American way. Your... Yeah. <laughs> You both are. You both are. Listen, we saw last week, and, and um, obviously Eddie was in a car accident, it kicked off the season three. Um, thank God you're alive and everything, but he's in a wheelchair. And I wanted to ask you, when you're playing somebody who is like now physically disabled, like, did you have to, um, you know, research that, get in a wheelchair, practice, you know, being in one and manipulating that? You know, how hard was that for you? Um, well, I was quote unquote, I mean, if COVID was a blessing, which it wasn't, uh, it gave us a very long break. It gave us a very long break and it gave me a lot of time to sit in this wheelchair and just kind of become very comfortable with it. Um, I have this wonderful uh, little group of all guys, it just so happens to be all guys who are in Eddie's situation, became paralyzed through a trauma later in their young male lives. And they have really made themselves available to me as a resource um, from the male perspective, which I think is kind of uh, unique. And I have, I realize it's a responsibility to tell the story accurately. And it is, uh, and I'm taking it pretty seriously, very seriously. And uh, picking their brains as much as possible, what it's like to be a guy, you know, like feeling yourself in the world who suddenly is, you, you wonder, can you even be romantic with anybody again? Can, if, you're in a, if you're a father or a husband, can you provide in any way? Is that, is that done? What is your identity now? Someone told me that when they sat in a wheelchair, they felt like their gender went from man just to wheelchair. And that's how the world responded to them. And that really forever affected me. Um, Little things. So I lived in this wheelchair for a while. You know, you think you just can't feel your legs. You are constantly in pain. Some people are constantly in pain due to the trauma of whatever ended up severing their spine. Um, and plus just having to sit constantly. I mean, do that for 10 straight years. It's, it's difficult. So you have to deal with that. And then you have to deal with the psychological trauma of it, especially for the first year or so until hopefully you accept it and integrate it into your life and you're just as happy as you used to be. So, yeah, um, yeah. it's needless to it say, must be, it I, must I be feel hard blessed to be able to tell the story and I, I try to take it as seriously as I can. No, good, good on you. Good on you. Uh, quickly, I want to ask you, I mean, this show is all about friendship and the tight bonds that everybody has. Who is the go-to friend 
on this set for you? Who, who do you confide in on, on this show? There's so many great actors. I, I talked to Chance Hersfield last week, who is an amazing kid, by the way. He that told kid, me man. his go-to was, was, yeah, was James Roday. Who's yours? Yeah. Well, it's really who we're working with. Uh, we're all very close. And uh, because of the new COVID times, all, all of the friends are, we're all tremendously close to each other. And because of COVID, we can only like work with one or two at a time. So right now I've been working a lot with Floriana Lima and Grace Park. And so these are the people I'm uh, kind of confiding in on set. But yeah, I mean, the guys, these are my guys, you know, Romney, Malcolm, and James are a day. We're on, we have a little side text chain where we're just kind of doing our own stupid stuff. Well, good. Well, we like stupid stuff, but listen, th congratulations. I keep, I love the show. Like I said, so, so much. You are fantastic on this. I love you watching so you on Grimm. You really are one of my favorite actors, my friend. So best of luck to you and uh, keep safe, keep healthy and happy holidays to you. Thank you so much. You too.